Hi everyone. Thanks for stopping in by my channel and visiting me. For those of you that are new, my name is Cheryl and four years ago on 10-21-14, I originally had gastric bypass RNY. My high weight was 298 and my surgery weight was also the same. I wasn't required to do a pre-op diet or anything like that. And in my four years leading up till now, I had successfully maintained and lost 101 to 103 pounds as I fluctuate it quite frequently. Um, I could not get under the 190s no matter what I did. And about two months ago, I was even doing keto and intermittent fasting and it was amazing. The first week, whoop, right down seven pounds. And then doing the exact same thing the very next week, I went right back up to 196. And I had been released from my surgeon the year before when my gallbladder issue was addressed. He said that I was successful. Well, he didn't. His, I'm not sure what she was. She's, she was a PA. But she, she talked to me, not my actual surgeon. And she, when I addressed my weight with her at that point, telling her I couldn't get down, she stated that my body was probably where it was going to be, that it decided that's where it wanted to stop. And for a year, I let that go, and um, it just wasn't working for me. So uh, my surgeon did do, uh, he checked everything when he did my gallbladder, and he said my pouch was tight. There was absolute restriction. There was really nothing he could do at that point. Again, a year later, which was about two months ago, I said enough, and I made an appointment, and I went back in, and I sat down, and I talked to him, and he said, looking at my chart, my record throughout the four years, he said I was extremely consistent. I kept the weight off. I maintained the weight loss, and he said, I'm very proud of you. You, you are a success. He didn't say it in those words, but that's what he basically said. And he said, I can help you. And he did mention a hiatal hernia, a hernia, which I used to bloat something terrible right here. I would puff way out like this. And now I don't since the hernia is gone, and I reckon that's what it was. He also said that he could shorten my intestine from 60 to 110, 120 centimeters. And he would remove the ghrelin hormone part of my stomach take that away and he would reduce my pouch even further so today I'm exactly three weeks post-op R&Y revision okay that said I'm going to update my progress okay I did a little bookie uh, I have a book since I had um my revision and I do a surgery weight log I do a food log and I write down everything per day and then in the back here my other tabby I have it's titled total loss per week and then I'm doing that okay now I will say that four years out, I was not tracking every day. And you, if, if you all do, that's amazing. I commend you. But most of us, after probably, I'm going to say the second to third year, I'm going to say the third year is where I started getting comfortable knowing that I was on track doing what I was supposed to do. And even now, I just had revision. I got to stop myself, even though I never really... I never overate. I had full restriction, it felt, at four years out. Um, I did eat more than a quarter cup. So, like, when I do, like, a pudding, like, if you watch my portioning video, or the soft food prep videos where I did the puddings, I had little half cup dishes. That was easy for me pre-surgery to... Cause Technically, pudding's a slider food. It goes right through. It doesn't really sit in there like a denser protein like turkey burger or chicken or fish or tuna. 
So it was easy, and it probably still would be, for me to do a half cup of pudding. So I have to stop myself and go, no, you're getting a half of that. And I do. I mean, I'm, a, I'm afraid to even put a millimeter over what I'm to have. In fact, I don't even get a whole full cup because I add a scoop of protein powder, and that makes it more, what's the word I want? more full let's go with that um so most people after i'm going to say the third year probably don't track and definitely at four years out if if you are four plus and still track daily again commendable because most of us don't that said with my revision absolutely 100 percent. in fact Dr. Mike, I keep wanting to say his name, but I don't want to do that. My surgeon, he was like, wow. And so was my dietician when they were like, okay, what's diet? And I hand them my book. And they're like, wow, okay. They didn't have to go on my fitness pal or nothing like that. Now, the only thing I didn't do, because my surgeon was like, so how many ounces and how many protein? I said, well, I didn't add them per day, but I'm getting there. You know, slowly but surely, I'm getting where I need to be. All right, all that said, I'm going to give you a rundown. Let's see, the last week, I'll, I'll give you the last couple days. That's two-week post-op. Okay, I'll give you the last four days of what I consumed. I write everything down. 11, 12, I had a click with 10 ounces of water. I had one ounce of turkey burger. Again, in that video, I made little turkey meatloafs. It wasn't turkey burger. It was turkey meatloafs. And I portioned them all out into one ounce. I had one of those. I had two sugar-free pops. I had a fat-free, sugar-free white chocolate pudding, which I added one scoop of Gene Pro 2. I had a Powerade Zero throughout the day. And I had a 10-ounce coffee with Fairlife fat-free milk as my creamer. That was on the 12th. On the 13th, I had a, oh, peppermint. I was wondering what I wrote there. Peppermint Mocha Click with 16 ounces of water. I had a mixed berry protein with 12 ounces of water, and that has 12 ounces of protein in. It's the new directions that my surgeon's office carries. That I did write down because it's not something I have on the pack because it was a sample. I had... Two sugar-free Twin Pops, three tablespoons of sugar-free, fat-free pudding, six ounces of water, and I also made ricotta bake. I had a serving, which was a quarter cup of that. On 11-14, I had 10-ounce decaf coffee plus a tablespoon of half and half. I had four ounces of sugar-free, fat-free pudding with a scoop of Gene Pro. Two sugar-free Twin Pops. Two sugar-free Twin Pops. Yesterday was the Twin Pop day. 20 ounces of water and 5 ounce Oikos plus Gene Pro. Um, the 20 ounces of water was actually, I had mint tea with some stevia in it. I'm working on the water, but I'm up since 1.30 and I got a shower. I fed my fur kids and I... This is still my quick mocha. I'm working on it. I'm trying. Um, it's going to take a while. I remember it being probably three months the first round before I could start really getting anything substantial in. And even at four years out, there are some days I'd sit with a cup of coffee for an hour or two. I got to work on the fluid intake. I get that. I'll get there. So, so far today, I've had my Click Mocha, well, I'm working on my Click Mocha in 10 ounces of water. And my surgeon did say, do not, do not, do not go over four to six ounces every hour. Take your time. I had a revision, and that's a lot stricter and more, he wants me to be very, very careful. So, I'm a, I'm... A little extra cautious if you want to know the God's honest truth. So I'll just take my sips and take my time. I'll get there. All right. The weight. 11.8, I was 187 through 11.11. 11. 
11, 12, 11, 13, I dropped down to 186. 11, 14, which was yesterday, I was 185. And today I'm on 11, 15, I am 184. Whoop! Look at Birdie back there kneading the couch. I love my burp bug. Okay, so if you want to go by the weeks, okay, from my highest that I've been in the last year and a half, two years, which was 198, I lost five pounds. From day uh, after surgery, which was 205 I shot up to from the surgery and that, it's 12 pounds since surgery. Week two, I lost 12 pounds from 198 and 15 from the 205 surgery. Week three, I'm coming in at 14 pounds loss from the 198 and 21 loss from my surgery date. So that is pretty doggone awesome, and I'm extremely happy. Um, I think my surgeon said that I should lose another 20 to th uh, 40, 50 pounds, I mean, from this revision. I'm thinking when it's said and done, I'm going to sit somewhere in between 140, 150. That's what's in my mind. We'll see where I go, but that's where I'm thinking I'm going to sit. And already, like, I am so able to tell. Like, this shirt is a junior extra large, and it was extremely tight, and I got plenty of room in it now. I mean, there's still my battle wound. These um, leggings, I couldn't even dream to get up. Now they're up and on and looking great. I'll just do a body shot here. While I'm standing, oh, let me move this great, this chair. Okay, so there you have it. My pants are, a, I think they're a small. And my, like I said, my shirt is a junior extra large, Old Navy, Chicago Bears, go Bears! So, I'm feeling, and I could really see it in my face, which is great because I hated that blasted double chin. It was driving me absolutely batshit crazy. So, I want to talk about a few things after weight loss surgery that we need to be mindful of, okay? Um, first go round, I don't remember when, but I had a lot of hair loss. Like, every time I wash my hair... I would get at least a handful of hair. Now, that said, I'm going to show you. I just got a shower, so my hair's like soaking wet. But I have a head of hair. My hair is thick. And I mean thick. Like, this much makes one heck of a ponytail, and I got all this hair left. So I truly did not miss my hair when it started, when it, was falling out like a handful at a shot, it didn't affect me at all because I have so much hair. But I did notice and it did trip me out. I mean, I remember coming out of the shower and I'd be like, oh my God, when? And I'd show him like a handful of my hair that I had in uh, a ball that I showed him because I would save it. Um, it comes back. You got to get, you know, I don't think, I'm not sure I'm not a doctor, but I think it's the shock of your body losing weight so fast and so much. It's just a shock. And it's your, your body's defense mechanism. I think I heard or read that somewhere. I don't think it's all... I, I, protein plays a part of it. Don't, don't misquote me there. But I don't think it's all that. I think it's everything because I definitely got my protein in. And I still would lose a handful of hair every shower. Now, as you can see, my hair's red. Red is the hardest color to keep. It fades out very, very quickly. So, because I color my hair red already, I don't... And because if I do... Well, let me finish my sentence. Because I have red hair and I color my hair, I don't wash my hair daily. And... If I do, my hair get that silky soft, I can't even do what I just did. It slides right out of a scrunchie. 
So I, and it, it just is like so shiny and so soft. I cannot wash my hair every day. And I'm a licensed hairdresser since I'm 18 years old. I'm 47 years old. And truthfully, washing your hair every day isn't good for you. It's just not. It's not the healthiest thing for your hair. I never use heat on my hair. I don't use styling products in my hair. I shampoo, I condition, and sometimes I put in um, this really good oil stuff I have, not all the time, but just to add a little bit of extra conditioning in my ends and that. And that is all I use in my hair, and I very seldom get my hair cut. I mean, I wear my hair up constantly. I don't really need to get my hair cut often, so I just basically go in and get my ends trimmed, and I do get pretty bad split ends, even not using that. So, it, using heat and all that. So, I'm telling you, and that's from the color and things like that. But... You don't need to wash your hair every day unless you have an oily scalp or whatever the case like that. What I use, and I didn't bring it out, I should have, is dry shampoo sometimes. Not often. I can't tell you the last time I used dry shampoo. Sometimes I use it if I want to really make a messy bun and make it funky. I'll use it because it, it doesn't stiffen like mousse and gel in my hair, which I hate. Mousse or gel in my hair. It's horrible. But if I use um, dry shampoo, it helps that I can like just use my fingers and make my bun really cute. Or if I put them up in a jaw clip. But that's after a day or two when my hair's actually dry. Um, my hair will be at least damp till tomorrow sometime, even with sleeping. So there's a tip for those of you experiencing hair loss. The hair loss will be a lot less if you wash your hair less and use dry shampoo in between. Now a trick with dry shampoo, use it at night and really get it in your scalp and when you wake up it'll like be all through your hair and it'll really absorb any dirt or oil or whatever. Dry shampoo is good stuff. When I first heard of it I was like, oh my god, dry shampoo, but I'm telling you it's a lifesaver. And um... There was something else I wanted to say about, you know, a little tip I have about weight loss surgery. After weight loss surgery. Oh, this ain't a tip, but I just had to put an order in at Old Navy. Oh, I'm so cold. I mean, I thought I was cold before, losing over 100 pounds. Buddy, let me tell you what, the little bit I lost and I'm really, really cold. My husband's sitting here with no shirt on and I'm sitting here bundled up and fuzzy socks on and... Socks underneath the fuzzy socks, and yes, I know I don't match, but that's okay. I love my fuzzy socks. I don't give a hoot what color they are. Um, so I just got some thermal pants and more fuzzers from Old Navy and a Chicago Bear tank top. Couldn't resist when I saw that. They had some Bears sweatshirts in that, but I have ones nicer than what they had. This actually came from Old Navy, and there's another... Another one I have in my closet that's Old Navy. And back in the day, my daddy and mom used to buy me every year for Christmas and birthday. I got something Chicago Bears. So it's a shame, but I don't have any of that anymore. Because even if I had it right now, it'd be huge on me. Because I've always been a... I mean, I've ne my lowest adult weight that I remember was 170. And I felt and looked really good there, which is why 170 is what I keep saying is my goal. But, excuse me. So, yeah, I think my progress is going good. I'm quite proud and happy of where I'm at. And uh, I don't know what the weather's like there. It looks like it just stopped snowing here, which is great because I'm going to put the slippers on and put a coat on. And I'm going to go out and record my babies. I was out there laughing at well, I wasn't out, I lie, I was at the window watching them. Even little Benny, our schnoodle, who's not too fond of the cold, he zips and zips back and forth in the yard and they're out there playing and wrestling and biting and growling and oh my God, the snow just brings out the character and the play in my kids. And I'll tell you, everybody's griping about the snow and I love it because my babes go out and they just play and play and play and I don't know if you can tell, 
But if you follow my channel and you watch me, nothing, I mean, I know my eyes have to light up because I feel it. Nothing in my life brings me the joy. I get choked up because I love them so much. Nothing in my life brings me the joy that my fur kids bring. And when I see them happy, my heart soars. And to see them out there playing in their big fenced yard, and ha I can't believe I'm crying. I cry when it comes to my kids a lot. But to see them so happy, just my heart's filled. It really is. I love them so much. So I'm going to actually record that as soon as I take them back. Out. Well, I don't take them out. They just go out in their fenced yard. But I'm actually going to go out with them and uh, I'm going to record them play. And it's the best thing ever. So, yeah, my kids <laughs> make mommy cry. Oh, Lordy. I hope you all are having a great day, and if it's, I'm sure it's snowing probably, unless you're in the hot climates, because it gave us a pretty good snowfall here. We were expected to get up to three inches. I don't, I'm not good with that. I don't know what we got. But if you're out and about in this weather, I hope you're safe, and even if it's not bad weather, please be safe wherever you are. And if you don't already, please like, comment, share, subscribe. And definitely click the notification bell because I upload frequently and I have a couple videos planned for today actually. I'm, I also crochet so if you're interested in that I have a video coming out soon here. I didn't record it yet but I do have a video of the things I've made in the last week and I have an announcement about a sale I'm going to have. And also like I just said I'm going to record my babies out there playing in the snow. I can't wait. I love them. Oh my God, they're so cute. So, again, I hope you all are having an awesome, amazing day. And I thank you so much for being here at my channel and viewing my video. And I hope you come back again and we get to know each other. Thanks so much for being here. Y'all have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.